G'day everybody, Nick Dingle here for the second part of the basic calculator video. In the first part, hopefully you've set up your form like this, you've named everything, you've set your fonts all the way you like them, and please make sure, if you like pretty things and you're not lazy like I am, set your colours up, set your pictures up, because now we're going to move on. First thing we're going to do is we're going to create the variables to store all the information that we need. And I'm going to use the normal calculator to sort of represent what variables we are going to need when we do this kind of thing. So let's say I got 56 plus 98 equals. Essentially, we're going to replicate that kind of functionality. We're going to forget the little display up the top here where it shows what we're doing. We're just going to focus on getting the result in here. So really, if you think about it, we put the first number in. We select our operation, we put the second number in, and then the result is stored in the text box. Now, we don't need a variable to store the result, because that's going straight into the text box. However, we need a variable for the first number. We need a variable for the operation, because it could be add, subtract, times, or divide. And then we need a variable for the second number that we type in. So we actually need three variables in total. And if we think about the type, or the data types that we need for these variables, they're quite easy. Two numbers are obviously going to be images, but we're going to talk about the operator in a sec. So what we're going to do now is go into the programming section of our form. So if you right click anywhere on the form and select view code, or you can use that shortcut, control alt zero. Now, the reason I didn't double click on anything is because I wanted a nice blank set of code to create our variables in. And if you remember how to create a variable, you use dim. And then the first number we can call num1 as an integer. He's just going to be a plain old whole number, no fractional parts. Then we're going to make the second number. And we need the third one, which is going to be the operation of the form. Okay. Now there's heaps of different variable types that we could use for this one. We could essentially use an integer. And what we could do with that is make a bit of meaning out of the numbers. So if operation was zero, we could make the assumption it's an addition. If operation was 1, it could be a subtract. If it was 2, multiply. If it was a 3, divide. Now, if you know about a new, uh, enums or enumerations, you could do the same sort of thing there. You could set up an enumeration with add, subtract, times, and divide in it and use that. If you don't know what I'm talking about, don't stress. Because I think the easiest way to go about this is just to use a string. And we'll actually put the words add, subtract, times and divide inside of the operation and we just check for those. So there are three variables. We don't need the fourth one as I said because the text box is going to be where the result is stored. What I think we should do right now is add some code to these number buttons. Now what I want you to do whenever you're programming like this you want to think about what do I have what do these buttons have to do? Alright so let's go into just number seven because he's the easiest one to get to. So what do we have to do? Well the first thing we have to do is add the number into the text box. So add our number to the text box. All right. And if you're watching the text box video, there's a lovely little function we can use called append text. And what's the name of our text box? Yeah, well, it's text display. We want to append text. What do we want to append is the question. You want to append the number seven. Now, why did I put quotes around that? It's because it's asking for a string. Strings are always encased in quotes. Now let's give this a quick test, have a look at the result. Sort of works, except for this zero at the front, it's a bit ugly. So what do we have to do for that? Well, we have to have a bit of an if statement above our append text. All right, we have to check if the text box is zero, then we're going to clear it, and then we'll append our number after that. So we're going to have an if statement. So right here, we're going to check if the text box is zero. So if the text box, now we have to go text box dot text and you have to go equals zero. Now again, why do we have quotes around the zero? Because text is a string. So if the text box is zero in quotes, then clear them out. Text display clear. Alright, let's give that a test, make sure it works. Perfect. Now obviously the other buttons don't work yet, so we've got to do them. So all the other buttons, we're just going to use this code. So I'm going to, I've just copied all that code. Let's go to 8. I'm going to paste it there, and we're just going to simply change that to an 8. And that's going to enable our 8 button to do the exact same thing. All right, I'm going to stop recording this video for the moment. I'm going to 
set up all my number buttons and during the meanwhile I want you to pause and I want you to do the exact same thing. So I'll see you in just a moment. Hey everybody and welcome back. Hopefully you've got all your buttons set up and uh, you probably noticed that the zero button looks really, really weird because if the text is zero, then clear it and then add a, a zero. Now really, it's going to work almost exactly how we want it to and I'll demonstrate that in a second. Now, if you show this code to any veteran programmers, they're probably going to laugh in your face because this is a really inefficient way of doing things. We can do things much, much easier. But you know what? People are always going to tell you your code is inefficient or wrong or could be better. You know what? And you are just learning if you're watching these videos. So seriously, just have a go. And if it works for you, stuff the others. Okay? Learn the advanced stuff later and the ways to make your code efficient. All right? So let's give this a quick test because I never ever like to go anywhere without testing my buttons. Now, as you can see, the zero is a bit weird, but you can tell it's working pretty well. And if we add in all of our numbers, and the zero seems to add at the end perfectly fine. All right, second step, we need to add in these operation buttons here. We need to add the adds, the subtracts, the times, and the divisors. Okay, and again, we need to think about what these buttons need to do. So the, when we click on these buttons, so let's have a quick look at our normal calculator. If we type 56 and press plus, you can see right there, it's got the first number. It clicked, oh, sorry, it's set the operation to add. And it's also, what we're going to do is we're going to clear the text box ready for the second number. All right. So there's three things that we have to do there. So let's go into this button. And let's have a look. So the first thing we need to do is get the number out of the text box. So where is it going? Well, it's going into num1. Where is it coming from? The text box. Now this is actually a really bad idea, okay? And I, again, this is probably a veteran programmer talking here, but it's a bad idea to take a string and try and jam it into an integer. Most programming languages won't even let you do that. It'll just say you cannot convert a string to a number. So what we're best off doing is taking the text boxes, text, converting it to an integer, then putting it inside number one. Now it's actually easier than it sounds, okay? There's a built-in library called convert, dot and then you get heaps of different things here okay later on in your future you may actually use a lot of these different things but this one right here to int 32 is what we're going to use it's going to convert it to an integer which is 32 bits long and now by default integers are 32 bits long so let's open a bracket and let's close it on the other side so take the text box's value convert it to an integer and jam it inside number one done all right, so that's our first job done. Second one was set the operation. So how do we set the operation? Well, you go operation equals, and then on the other side, what you want the operation to be. So this is an add button, so I'm going to set the operation to add. And then the third thing we're going to do is clear the text box and set it back to zero. Now, we could use the dot clear button, but then we're going to set the text to zero as well. So I'm going to do this in one line of code instead of two. So what are we affecting? We are affecting the text boxes text. And what are we doing? We're setting it to zero, just like so. So there's our three jobs. Get the first number, set the operation, clear the text. All right, let's try it out. Let's go 56 plus. Perfect. It's ready to go. Okay, so again, I'm going to copy this stuff here and set it to my other three buttons. And the only thing you have to change in each of the buttons is the text and the operation. That's the beauty of this part. All right, everybody, I'm going to pause the video, and I'll see you in just a moment. Good, everybody. Welcome back. How did you go? I hope you did well, okay, because I know I can't hear you. Anyway, so I've set my four operations and my four buttons up. Divide, times, subtract, and add. All right? The last thing that we should probably do, and it would probably be a good idea to set up our equals button. And again, let's think about the things that we have to do in this equals button. So the first thing that we have to do is get the second number that they've typed in. Because what they're going to do is type in the first number, click add, and then type in their second number, and then click equals. All right, so the second number is waiting to be captured straight away. We then have to check what the operation is that they want to do. So in this case, add. And then add the two numbers together. And where are we going to put those two numbers? Well, we're going to put it inside the text box. So there's our three things. Get the second number, check the operation, perform the addition, and jam it in the text box. 
All right, so let's double click on this bad boy. And let's do our first thing. So get the second number. And I'm going to be nice and lazy here. I'm literally just going to copy this line of code, paste it here, and just change that num1 to num2. All right, so that's getting the second number from the text box. And then we need to check the operation that they chose. So what are we checking? We're checking the variable operation. And we're going to check if it equals add, not divide. We're going to check if it add. So if operation equals add, then what are we going to do? We're going to perform addition. And then we're going to store it in the text box. So since we're storing it in the text box, let's go text display dot text equals num1 plus num2. Done. Press play and let's give that a go. There's our three jobs done. Add the six plus add the nine equals 145. How good is that? One cool thing about the way that we set this up is we can actually click plus and the 145 is actually going to be considered our first number again. So I can type in a second number and keep going. Blip, 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 blip. Now that's just an unintended result. But anyway, that's just something I thought I'd add out. So what about the other operations? Well, that's quite easy. Instead of an if, we're going to add else if the operation equals subtract, then perform subtraction. Okay, so text display dot text equals num1 minus num2 and so forth. It's that easy. So let's copy and paste this guy, 2 and 3. And let's change into times and divide and get rid of the extra space. And because I'm pedantic, I'm going to change these and change these symbols in the middle. So that's a multiplication. And that's, whoop, that's a regular division. And that's it. There are four operations 100% complete. Obviously, I'd like to test them out, but it's pretty much it done. So let's hit play. Let's just check our division. Yeah, it's pretty good. 10 divided. Whoa. There's a bug, but anyway. Let's go. 10 divided by 2 equals 5. Perfect. All right, nice and simple. It seems to work. Yeah, and I hope you've learned something through how to haul this process, going through the basic calculator. So my challenge to you is now, everybody, implement these buttons up here. So you implement your square root percentages. Um, that's your negative and your positive values. Okay, and have a go with the memory storage. That's pretty cool, that one. I'm really interested to see if anybody comes up with that. And if you do, give me a reply video. I'm keen to check it out. But anyway, in the next video, we're going to have a look at making a really basic word editor with loading and saving functionality built into it. But for the moment, that's all I've got. Mr. Dingle signing out. I hope to see you in the next video, everybody. See you then.